The rape of Nike will soon become the rape of America. I encourage everyone to do their own research, and if you find credibility to the claims made in the following parts in this series, it would be prudent to take the proper precautions. The phrase the rape of Nanking has special significance in world history, as it relates to the genocidal treatment of a conquering army and the utter devastation that it can bring to a civilian population. If you are unfamiliar with this historical event, you may wish to review these tragic events in order to see why so many are concerned about our immediate future as a nation. After familiarizing oneself with this tragic event, most of us will take an entirely new and sober view of the existence of Russian troops on American soil and the dangers we all face as a result. Truth is stranger than fiction there can be no doubt that the two Hunger Games movies, Hunger Games and Catching Fire, strongly represent the principles of the Agenda 21 Beast, which is overtaking our country. So too, the hot new movie in Hollywood, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, eerily parallels real life, as a young covert CIA analyst, uncovers a Russian plot to crash the United States economy with a false flag terrorist attack. I do, however, want to make one distinction, the coming Russian-led takedown of this country is not a case of Russia versus America. Rather, Putin and Obama are working for the same side. It is the side that JFK called the gnomes of Zurich. I call them the bastards from Basel. Upon his many appearances on my show, Pastor Lindsay Williams has often stated that it is an unwritten rule that the globalists must somehow publicly declare their intentions prior to executing a plan which could result in a massive loss of life. It is very possible that this new movie, based upon the late Tom Clancy's final novel, is the manifestation of this dictate. Further, Clancy died under very mysterious circumstances. Did he get too close to the truth regarding the Russians and the possible false flag event? Andrew Breitbart, Michael Hastings and Tom Clancy, all were writers who got too close to the truth and paid the ultimate price for their journalistic trespasses. Prima facie evidence there are three groups of people who are not in the George Carlin declared club. The first group consists of people who are fully awake and are calling attention to the dangers being posed by the criminal enterprise that we call the Obama administration. The second group are Americans, who understand that something is desperately wrong but are unclear as to the details. The third and final group are the sheep and no amount of proof of global elite mischief would convince them that the artificially created world of CNN is not true and that the terrorists truly do hate us for our freedoms. This third group could have pictures of Russian military officers, in bed, sleeping with their wives and they would still deny that there are Russian soldiers on American soil. After publishing my last article, in which I presented prima facie evidence that this administration is in bed with the Russians by revealing the public existence of government documents such as the U.S.-Russia Bilateral Presidential Commission Working Group on Emergency Situations, as well identifying the fact that this agreement called for the importation of at least 15,000 Russian soldiers to train with FEMA for disaster preparedness. Ray Charles could have seen that this agreement was a smokescreen for more nefarious Russian military activity on American soil. For example, since when does America need 15,000 Russian troops to replace the National Guard with regard to a disaster response? Why would it be necessary to bring in Russian troops for some disaster planning all the way from Russia for some undefined emergency? And, as I have reported before, why is DHS taking control of the various state-run National Guard units? This activity is a massive, well-coordinated extra-governmental organization formed under the Obama administration, which represents only one of almost two dozen similar working groups bringing together top the United States and Russian officials for the purpose of creating a massive false flag operation. In a quick recap, my last article identified the existence of government documents from this bilateral agreement, in which it is stated that FEMA and the Russian military are cooperating on a number of fronts including the enforcement of the rule of law according to previously referenced the United States State Department documents. Enforcing the rule of law can only mean one thing, Russians and FEMA personnel, under the auspices of DHS will be enforcing the coming martial law. In the previous article, visual proof of the existence of Russian troops training in DHS vehicles was provided. 
Obama Obama does not need Russian soldiers to write parking tickets. They are here to enforce martial law. Add this to the existence of the previously mentioned government documents, and you have an occupation force and it is going to represent the blue helmets of the UN, but it will be decidedly Russian. When the doors, at 3 a.m., across this country, get knocked down and the thugs in uniform pull you and your family out of your homes, they will be primarily Russian. The proof is there for all to see, at least for those that want to see it. The voice of Russia discredits my Russian troop martial law assertions the lady doth protest too much, methinks from Shakespeare's Hamlet following the first set of articles that I published with regard to the threat that Russian soldiers on American soil posed, I was quickly invited to appear on Russian, state-run media. This was the 800-pound gorilla in the room. I provided the Russians with the requested personal information, which included my academic credentials, which clearly revealed someone who taught research classes at the graduate level. They were also provided information, which declared that I have taught post-secondary statistics, psychology and sociology courses for 17 years. When I was introduced on The Voice of Russia, my academic credentials, as a researcher and an expert on human behavior were ignored, as I was merely introduced as the host of The Common Sense Show. I recognized the setup for what it was, and I decided to imitate Alex Jones' handling of CNN's Pierce Morgan and his gun control interview with Alex, in which Alex succeeded in blowing right by Morgan's roadblocks and distractions, to get right to the heart of the mat. I subsequently did the same by exposing the fact that martial law is on the verge of being implemented. Unable to discredit me in the radio interview, the Voice of Russia website posted the interview and labeled me as an extremist, despite the fact that every mention of martial law was linked back to my website for documentation. It is clear that the Russian government-owned media was trying to cover their martial law tracks, which was initially created by the presence of Russian soldiers on American soil. Following the Russian slander against my documentation of the coming martial law, I exposed this agenda on my website. Again, the Russian propaganda machine sprung into action and the voice of Russia's Catherine wrote a rebuttal to the comment section of my website. Catherine began her posting on my website by stating I completely disagree that, as you said there's an agenda of this interview amazingly, Catherine went on to make the following statement yes, our radio is governmental, but it is not a complete brainwashing. This left me reflecting on the fact that the lady doth protest too much, methinks. Conclusion two Japanese generals had an all-day beheading contest. Can the use of guillotines really be that far-fetched? If we in the alternative and truthful media are unable to wake up a significant portion of this country as to the intentions of Russian troops on our soil, we will see the modern-day version of the rape of Nanking being visited upon American citizens, and all the signs point to the fact that we do not have much time to prepare. Since publishing yesterday's article, I have received a half dozen emails detailing eyewitness accounts of Russian soldiers in Gatlinburg, TN, Colorado Springs, Company, Ventura, Ka, and Ketchikan, AK. Not only are there Russian troops on American soil, there are legitimate and demonstrable, long-standing military reasons, which would prompt Russia to engage in a military takeover of the United States. However, please keep in mind that this takeover is being orchestrated by the bankers. Also, the next and last part in the series will clearly demonstrate that Obama and Putin work for the same interests. Obama has deliberately left the back door of this country open to an external invasion. This will be the topic of my last article in this series. I encourage everyone to do their own research, and if you find credibility to the claims made in the following parts in this series, it would be prudent to take the proper precautions.